The Ancients' World Chapter 381, Heading to Greshina, Capital of the Elven Kingdom 2 There are too many variables to attack any human kingdoms or empires in the current state they're in. They're strong and gaining power every day, all thanks to gaining independence from the Church of Light. My attention is on the reports in front of me now, and they're not good. The massive hole in the border will take longer to repair than expected. Not to mention we have no idea who broke in and where they are. The first time I discussed this with my allies, it seemed impossible the fire mage that burned through the border wall has enough firepower to invade a legitimate empire. My queen, it's become awfully late. Why don't you go to bed for the night? My butler pokes his head into my office, voicing his concerns. The silence and solitude of my alone time have been interrupted. My eyes meet the old man that has served me since I can remember. Evander was there during my birth so long ago. He was the butler to my parents. After I'm done with these reports, Evander. After that, I'm heading to bed. He looks unconvinced at my lie, and here I thought it was modest enough. He steps into my office and heads over to meet me at the table. He stands at my side as the paper rests on the table. You've always been great at deception, but you could never lie to me. Just like your mother and father. Handfuls all on their own. Evander has been serving the royal family for seventeen generations. He's one of the oldest and strongest elves alive today. He's older than the majority of the Greshina. Out of the years of expansion, he's seen many things. He knows more about the Orizox family than I do. Not everyone has the same insight as you, Evander sometimes, there are sleepless nights when taking care of business he knows what I'm planning, and he's told me how he thinks about it. Evander has witnessed many wars and conflicts the elven people have been in. Knowing what I'm planning has caused him to question me several times. When I was a boy, the elven kingdom was the same as it is today, just fewer guards and nobles I'd love to see it change for the better instead of the same thing every ruling man or woman his words cause me to halt, and I look up at him. For the first time in my life, Evander has a sad look he's thousands of years old, and when he was a boy, the elven kingdom wasn't much different than it is now. We are elves, Evander. We're meant to be on top and rule over everything. Not just our people the half-breeds get their chances he sighs and turns towards the balcony. Enter the patio looking over Greshina. He's still in his stance of formality and ready for anything, but there is an air about him that's changed. I get up from my seat and join him on the balcony patio. Do you know what your ancestors told me, my queen? His voice is soft and tired, and it's the first time I've heard him like this. They told me to look after the family to help make the elven kingdom great. That's... Evander takes his hands from behind his back, and he leans forward against the stone railing. I have failed, my queen no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't do anything your parents begged me to make sure you didn't turn out like them I failed them too he starts to lean his body forward and against the stone rail. I don't think I can live like this anymore my heart sinks as I watch what happens. The top half of his body starts to fold over the stone railing I burst forth, and my hand grasps the back of his uniform at the last second, pulling him back to safety once I have him safely from the balcony, I can't help or stop my body from moving. The first thing I do is slap him across the face, and in that exact second, I wrap my arms around him. Evander has been here for me every step of my life. Why would you do such a thing? Is what I'm trying to do so evil? Securing the future of the Elven Kingdom and its people? That you'd think you're a failure. That you'd try to kill yourself he doesn't respond he doesn't hug me back he remains unmoving in my arms. I pull away and look up at him and his eyes are watering what will happen to me when you purge the half-bloods? For I am a half-blood. My breath is taken from my lungs, and I step back there isn't any way Evander is a half-blood there just isn't will you kill me too? Will I die at the tip of a soldier's blade for your conquest? Evander is too strong to kill like that. But he's bound by magic to obey any order I give him someone could use that I'd never kill you, Evander. I'd never let any harm come to you. You're not a half-blood. My ancestors wouldn't have allowed this. 
they wouldn't have let a half-blood take care of future generations. My eyes meet his, and all I see is the truth he's telling me the truth. We've cleared the dungeon, and we know why Sarah and Haley came here. They got the potions that turn people into elves. Physically, at the least doesn't Marcus look the cutest. My words come out of instinct, looking at my youngest son. His hair is pure white, and his ears are pointy and curved. His eyes are now a clear blue. He looks just like Chris does. One of the most adorable things is seeing them together. Yeah, but I'm glad these are permanent changes. Being able to dispel at any time you want is nice. I wouldn't mind them looking like this for the rest of their days. Unlike their white hair, mine is a golden blonde and much longer than before. Blonde isn't my first choice, simply because I love my original raven hair color. However, elves only come in certain hair colors. White, blonde, and sometimes blue, from what I've seen. Kman, you really prefer this look over my old one? Some husband you are I'm not surprised Chris likes the way I look. He likes me any way I look. My nerves are on end, and my mind is filled with echoes and thoughts about what Sarah revealed. Just as I thought, I wasn't able to get any sleep the sun will start rising in a couple of hours, but I'm already too edged out to get any sleep. Instead, I leave the sleeping and snoring Jasmine and get out of the tent. My eyes land on the campfire. Lo and behold, my brother is already sitting there and looking into the forest beyond the fire. As I approach, he slowly turns his head, and we make eye contact. His face hardly moves from his neutral resting position. Couldn't sleep, and neither could I I don't respond, and instead, I sit next to him in the dark and look to where he was before. It was hard to hear what he told me, and I don't think I'll never fully process everything he changed our lives and fates, but at the cost of billions of lives yet, couldn't sleep my head finds its way against his shoulder, and my stress is lowered a little. He's my rock, and I rely on him I need to do the same for him he's my brother, and I'll be there for him. Chapter 382, Heading to Greshina, Capital of the Elven Kingdom 3 Haley and I are looking into the darkness of the forest, and she rests her head on my shoulder. Moments like this with my sister are rare, and when they happen, it means she's in a headspace she needs help with. Everyone has moments in their life when they need someone to help them doing that for Haley is my duty as her brother. She's my blood. The campfire has a mild flame, and it's producing a warmth that I welcome. Sally and I are unaffected by cold environments. Her class prevents her from sustaining cold damage. My stats are too high to get affected by anything Gaia's natural weather can produce. What will you tell mom and dad if we ever see them again she's asking the hard questions here. Mom and dad will react differently than Haley. how they'll respond has been on my mind for some time now, and it's not like there are a lot of outcomes. I'm not sure they need to know anymore I thought about it a lot and told myself I'd tell everyone eventually, but some things are better left hidden she's not going to argue after what I've revealed. I know she regrets asking me about my strange behavior and knowledge that I carry around. Yeah that seems smart I'm not debating with you on this one, brother her voice is getting heavier with exhaustion. We've both been up all night at times. The cause of this sleepless night is stress. Something that we're both experiencing regularly. It's nice that it's just the two of us right now. No one to get in the way of a needed time of silence and conversation. I trust you won't tell them hearing it second hand, or at all, will be bad she keeps silent and I decide to take her silence as compliance. We've been doing this long before Marcus was born, long before things got bad for us on Earth. The stars are slowly fading from the sky, mainly from the sun's arrival soon. While it's not light out, it's that weird time of light before the sun rises. Do you ever think about the people that died the people that got dusted I'm terrified that they've ended up somewhere far worse than us no, I don't think about that it's not an idea I would entertain. The dead are gone, and while it is my fault, and somehow I'll pay for it I don't think about them or maybe I did. I don't remember anymore would you hate me if I said no? My actions led to the death of billions, but Earth was already dying. 
There wasn't much time left maybe this was the best we could get she doesn't lash out or react violently. She sighs and relaxes her body a bit. My eyes are focused in front of me, so I can't see her reaction. Sarah, look at me. I turn my head, and Haley has her chin on my shoulder and looks at me. I'll never hate you, and predicting and preventing an event like this can't be done by a normal person if you did know. I know you would try to stop it Haley is right about that. If I knew about the collision, I would have tried to stop it maybe not seeing the way the world was going and the ultimate fate of humanity, this was final salvation something to save us from our doomed existence. Do you miss any of your friends? I know you had some close ones before all this happened while Haley had friends, only a few were close. She doesn't answer, and I take that as a hint to drop the topic of conversation. My friends, they're dead none of them played games thinking themselves too good for them people miss out on tons of fun with that mentality this time it cost them their lives where are Sally and you heading after we're done here? That's something I've given a lot of thought to. There are many options to choose from and quests that are yet to be finished the first thing I need to handle is my tier up quest in the Kingdom of Avalon. I'm still only tier 1 and I'll have tier 3 after I complete tier 2 and tier 4 right after 3 I'm far behind on my original priorities. I'll have to ask Sally, but best guess at the moment is the Kingdom of Avalon. She lifts her head at that. She might want to come along since she's a player too and it's a kingdom made by the system for players to meet and talk. Every player heads there to tier up to the second tier level. After that, tearing up gets a bit hard. You probably didn't account for me in your plans but I'd love to come with you guys Haley knows that I would let her come with me. She's only saying this out of courtesy. I wouldn't mind the group just being Sally, Jasmine, Haley and me once this quest is over, I'm betting the rest of the people taking on this crazy quest with us will split up and go their separate ways. You don't need to ask, but you already knew that. Don't just assume Jasmine wants to come with us, though. Jasmine might want to do something else. Her desires for adventure and goals shouldn't be pushed aside to come with us, but I can't speak for her. Not that what I just thought is correct. She has so many choices given her new power. She was telling me she wanted to make a difference in the slave market. Shut it down forever that's a noble goal, and she shouldn't be held back if that's what she wants. My arms fail to find the other half of me and at the missing of his person, I lean up and look around the tent. Getting my clothes is my plan, but first, I have to get the gunk out of my eyes. After getting everything on and prepared, I leave the tent and look around till I see Sarah and Haley near the campfire. Silently sitting they talked about something serious. At my light footsteps, they both look up and give fake smiles. Haley looks particularly rough from lack of sleep and energy. Whatever they talked about yesterday has kept her up all night. You two been out here all night. I didn't even notice that Sarah was gone, and that means he made sure he was careful about getting out undetected. Haley remains quiet, and I look at Sarah for an answer I'm not getting from the sister. Yet, yeah, we came out here to talk around 5 a.m. We've been discussing memories, thoughts, plans, and other things. Did you sleep all right? I know I kept you up for a while. He's sweet to be concerned about me, but it's not about me at this moment. It's about them. As I sit next to Sarah, I wrap my arms around him and give him a big hug. The best hug that I can provide. Before long, I do the same for Haley. Doing this just seems right. Comforting them somehow is all I can think of at the moment. My brother isn't worthy of you. She hugs me back and we all can't help but chuckle at her words. Soon, we'll be back on the move, and I'm getting nervous the closer we get to Gresshina the closer we get to my family the family that condemned my mother and me to a horrid life I survived she didn't. Chapter 383, Heading to Gresshina, Capital of the Elven Kingdom 4 Everyone is starting to wake up and join the growing ring around the campfire. Jasmine and Melimora have taken a seat, and we're waiting for the rest to wake up. Jasmine is looking at me, and I recognize the look. Hungry. She nods her head and has a rise in positivity. 
I open my inventory and toss her some dried meat. Making my supply of fried meat go from four to three. She chows down on the food, and every present takes this opportunity to get their own food and start eating. Sally gets some food rations from me, making my supply go from three to two. When everyone is awake and has eaten something, we'll start moving. That was implied, but nothing wrong with clearing it up. We still have some people sleeping. Ashburn, Leela, Freskra, Terox, and Helda are still in their tents. Doubt it'll be much longer given the noise we're all making. Melly more mind if I ask what Gresshina is like Sally speaks between her bites and swallows. I'm curious to know more about Gresshina too. I know very little about it from my old life. Even during that time, people didn't get into the Elven Kingdom. Only a few lucky players ever got across the border for a quest, and they'd be kicked out as soon as they were done. It's the oldest city in the Elven Kingdom and the heart of our people. The most important and influential people work and live in Greshina. That's information I could have deduced myself. I'd like to hear something I couldn't figure out. Melimora senses the disappointment at the lack of information, and she sighs as she leans back against the log she's resting against. The history of our prejudice and racism starts in Greshina, and it's where all pure-blood elves stay. You're not allowed inside without proof of who you are. It's why we need Terox. The elven society is split between pure-blood and half-breeds. Melimora probably doesn't know as much as we'd hope she'd know. Helda and Terox would know far more, given that they're pure-blooded elves and have been to Greshina before. Do you know anything about the Orvalo family? Sally is treading a dangerous path asking about her family could cause more pain than she might imagine. I know nothing about the Orvalo family the things I've learned from Sally telling me about them are all I know. Apparently, they're one of the most powerful pure-blood elven families. The Orvalo family keeps to themselves but they're obsessed with blood purity. They're also the richest noble family in the Elven Kingdom. Wow that's not good. Sally stays quiet and lowers her head towards the ground. My arm finds its way around her shoulder, and I pull her closer to me. Bringing her body in closer to mine. You're stronger than you know, Sally remember that she leans her head against my chest as the words exit my mouth. Her mother was condemned by their family and she was too. Everyone seeing her reaction stays quiet. It's no secret who Sally really is Saliandra Orvalo she must hate sharing her name with the family that cursed her mother and her they stay on a property on the Elven Kingdom. It's massive and constantly guarded. Not unbeatable, though. Their own arrogance blinds them from danger. Melimora is right about that. The carriage slowly moves, and Sarah is resting on the top of the carriage with me. We decided that it's more comfortable to be out here than in that cramped carriage. Terox and Helda haven't been a problem, and I think they'll hold it together until after we're finished. My mind is being pulled back to the Orvalo family my family. Sarah has been an incredible support for me, and so has everyone else sometimes I feel like I'm using him do you ever feel like I'm using you, Sarah it's not something I'd usually do, but ripping the band-aid off fast is the best option. He doesn't respond, and instead, I feel his hand run up my back and rest with his fingers on the cusp of going into my hair. His lack of response worries me, but his affectionate touch is helping that. His chest slowly rises and falls as we look at the morning clouds lit by the rising sun. No, I don't. Everyone needs help some more than others, and some less than others it's only using them if you don't help in return, and you've helped me, Sally. Oh my stomach feels light now that I know his answer. He makes me feel funny but good funny I know that I love him, and I know he loves me but moments like this reaffirm all that I feel for him do I do the same for him? Do I make his stomach flutter? When we make it into Greshina, we'll be close to finishing why we came. I have a plan in mind, but we'll wait until we're in the city to talk about that he's always got a plan. Haley is also worrying me she's changed since last night when she and Sarah talked mind if I ask what happened to Haley? She's not looking so good the clouds are fluffy, and the sun shines brighter every minute that passes. Sarah does say anything, and I understand why. 
It's between him and Haley. Business between siblings. It does suck that it's affecting her so much, and Sarah didn't sleep at all. He doesn't look as rough as Haley, though. I revealed a terrible truth to her the same truth I'll reveal to you when we're done with everything here. I know I should feel worried about that but I don't when I hear Sarah talk about some terrible truth. All I feel is trust in him am I gullible? More than I thought I was? I can tell how worried Jasmine is by the way she's glancing at me from time to time I'm adding to the already tense and awkward atmosphere in the carriage. Sarah and Sally have the right idea in riding on top of the carriage. Terox and Helda aren't speaking, but it's not so bad since they have a better understanding now. The things that Sarah told me are repeating in my head over and over I try to imagine what he tells me, and when I do, I feel a hollow numbness and a loss of will to live thinking that I could become something so it's torturing knowing that I ended up like that the truth about him changing the future it makes me question everything. What if I never existed most of my family problems wouldn't have happened mom wouldn't have died the future wouldn't have been so horrible that Sarah made a desperate action as going back in time to fix everything will arrive at the wall of Gresshina by noon tomorrow. Is there anything anyone would like to ask me for information? Terox's words barely register for me. No one asks anything, and the awkward silence returns, and I decide that I'm going to walk outside next to the magically moving carriage. As I leave, Jasmine joins me. Everyone else decides to stay inside. My eyes unconsciously look towards the top of the carriage, and Sarah and Sally are resting at the top of the carriage, looking at the sky as they lay down he's lived with this truth. He's better adjusted to it than I am. Chapter 384, Heading to Gresshina, Capital of the Elven Kingdom 5 The day has been quiet, and nothing has happened between Terox and Helda, which is a good sign. Sally and I are sitting up now and looking out ahead on the road. Haley is up there all by herself. You should go talk to her she needs someone that knows what she's going through Sally speaks words of wisdom, and her compassion is something I love. Deciding not to waste any time, I stand up and jump off the top of the carriage towards her. I land a little behind her. She hears my landing but doesn't slow down or wait for me to catch up. In a burst of speed, I'm right beside her. She doesn't look at me, and I see that her eyes are in a state of redness and dryness she's trying to deal with what I told her on her own. Saying something out of nowhere would work, but it's not very tactful. Instead, just being next to her will help. When she's wanting to talk, she'll say something. The road is wide and empty and without any other occupants. Sometimes, this trip has been boring, and I wouldn't mind some action. Elena here's dungeon was fun but far too bloody. My eyes catch movement on the road up ahead. Did you see that? Haley speaks, but it's not about anything pertaining to her issues. As we keep walking, a roadblock comes into view. There are elven men and women in leather armor, and some are plated armor. The stronger ones are at the front. From the looks, they're bandits. Bandits holding up one of the main roads to Gresshina that seems unlikely we've got trouble. Seeing bandits holding up this road seems out of place. I didn't think the elven people would let something happen so close to their capital. Haley nods in agreement with my observation. We get closer, and the carriage behind us has stopped moving. Sally warned the others, and they're letting Haley and I take care of this problem. How do you want to handle this, sis killing them would be easy, but this could have unforeseen consequences for us what they are, I don't know this all seems like some sort of trap or bait. These bandits are out of place. We continue walking towards them, and they prepare to start talking. Haley has yet to give me an answer, and before we're within earshot of them, she speaks. We'll give them one chance. After that, they're mine. I'm not going to argue with her. As we get within talking distance and stop, there is silence. The bandits haven't talked yet, and neither have we. Normally bandits would speak by now, but they haven't. The one I assume the leader steps in front of the group and folds his arms. He looks at us up and down. Myself more than Haley. He's gauging our danger. My leather-looking armor is deceiving, but it's not leather armor. 
All we want are your valuables. Hand over everything you and the people in the carriage have. Once done, we'll let you through. Wow I wasn't expecting that. From most of the encounters I've had, they'd demand sexual favors from the females traveling with me. I'd expect Haley has dealt with the same problem. Seeing a group only after valuables is actually something nice to see. Didn't think I'd ever feel that way or say something like that I'm only saying this once, let us pass or die. Haley cuts right to the chase. Their reactions also surprise me, and the leader turns around and whispers to the other strong members. Haley and I look at each other, and we're both a little confused. All right, just be wary once you reach the capital. The corrupt guards won't let you pass so easily. The group moves aside and removes the roadblock I'm thoroughly perplexed. My face shows this, and Haley is giving a similar reaction to me. She waves for the carriage to move forward, and we wait for it to pass before we follow behind. We don't keep our backs turned to them. Only when we're out of sight do we turn back towards the road. Was that some delusion or hallucination? Am I losing my mind? You're not the only one that feels that way, Haley. Never had I had an encounter like that before. Why would they stop us, demand out valuables? Just to let us pass with no issues after a threat upon their lives? Just thinking about the events makes me wonder even more. Technically, they did the correct thing to preserve their lives I'm just not used to people acting to preserve their lives like that. What could this mean? I'm literally thrown for a loop here. I'm dumbfounded literally. Dumbfounded. We catch up to the back of the carriage, and Sally looks over the edge of the top and towards us, curious as to what happened. Do you have any ideas what that was? I continue talking, and I try asking Haley, but she looks as confused as me. In the end, it's not bad. It's just so unexpected that you don't know what to do when the pattern fails to repeat. Your guess would be as good as mine I'm so used to having men demand that I share my body with them. Demand that of Jasmine. They didn't do that. It makes me worried if I'm honest maybe it's the way elven bandits do things. My attention is taken from Sally's waving hand as she wants to be let in on the conversation. What did they ask from you? That's a valid question for her to ask, and she must have drawn the conclusion that we handed something over to them. I shake my head, and I have trouble finding the words to explain what this might mean could there be an ambush further up the road? Those bandits' behavior confused me so much that it's actually distracted me from my depression. I welcome the distraction, but I'm concerned about that what do you think the odds of us running into more down the road are? My question is a little dumb since the closer we get to the Greshina, the more security there'll be before Sarah can answer, Helda steps out and joins us. If anyone would know, it'd be her or the people that have been here the longest. What did you guys give to let us pass? Hey? She doesn't know either? Sarah and I both shake our heads and explain that we didn't hand anything over and we actually threatened them. That's odd I've never seen that before wow I expected Helda to know about this. Sarah takes on a thoughtful look and closes his eyes. He's thinking about something, and given his future knowledge, he's probably trying to remember something about this. He opens his eyes after a couple of seconds, and he's disappointed. We need to be alert for the rest of the trip. Something could be going on that we missed back there. I agree with that conclusion. That was way too easy to be real, and if it was. I don't think I'll ever see it again. The closer we get to Greshina, the less criminal activity there is around. I doubt we'll run into anything I have no clue what to do about this Helda calmly explains her thoughts, and it's on the same baseline that I thought. The closer we get, the better the security. Out of the Ordinary Raises Red Flags Chapter 385, Time and Effort The magical item has been taking us the exact path Sarah and Haley have taken, and this place was where they went after they were done with Ilanahir's dungeon. The city of Wessex's, a merchant city that has a lot of commerce. Following in Sarah and Haley's footsteps helped in ways I didn't count on it helping. The potions that changed us are the main things. Since we look like elves, 
we don't have any problems with people suspecting us. All we have to do is keep to ourselves and get information. We're heading to an inn they stayed at, and we're not expecting to get much. Chris and I don't know what they look like. They took the same potions we did, and that means even when we do catch up with them, we won't recognize them. It hurts my pride as a mother that I don't know what my kids look like anymore, but I know that it's no fault of mine. The inn they stayed at is just up ahead, and I'm eager to ask the bartender some questions. They're sure to know something. I can see that look, and you're getting your hopes up. I look at my husband, and he can see that I'm unhappy with that statement. I'm allowed to hope that there is some information about my kids, and he should be doing the same thing I am. You need to stop being so negative. If there is a small chance that there is some information about our kids, then we should have hope. He closes his eyes and releases a sigh. I have the sudden urge to smack him. My urge has halted as we stand outside the destination that the magical item has marked for us. Remember, I'm not trying to bring you down. I'm just trying to keep realistic expectations. We already have an item that tells us where they've been. We can just continue traveling instead of stopping here. His pragmatic approach is a double-edged sword. We might miss information and clues if we skip this and head straight for Gradol. He does bring up a good point, though we can get a lot of ground covered during the time we're searching here. All right, we'll do it your way, Chris. Let's keep moving. Marcus starts walking on the road, and we leave, heading towards Gradol. Chris and I aren't wasting any more time. Marcus leads the way in front of us, and we're looking around Wessex's as we make our way towards the gate exiting towards Gradol. It's strange not seeing at least a couple of players. The elves do a great job of keeping people out. Honey, I'm sorry that my approach always seems different than yours. My heart flutters at my husband's words. I should apologize for my flaws too. Mom and Dad are being lovey-dovey, so I'm staying ahead of them on the road. I don't want to see my parents sucking each other's faces. While they're back there doing what they want to do, I need to think of something that'll entertain me until something interesting happens. My control over my fire is improving, and I always enjoy playing with it. I wouldn't mind an actual fight. Elena here's dungeon was fun, but it was really bloody. Mom was afraid that I couldn't handle that. Proved her wrong. I know that I'm a kid and young, but I'm not a baby anymore. I can think for myself, and I can protect myself. Having a legendary class means that I will be hard to kill, and I have a lot of power. My thoughts have been filled with my older brother and sister. It's been so long since I saw them I want to show Sarah how much stronger I've become, and I want Haley to know she can't pick on me anymore. Sweetie. Don't go too far ahead. Stay within our view. Mom makes sure I'm not getting too far away from them. I'm starting to wonder if she has a mental problem. She doesn't like separation from her children do all mothers go through something like this? Sarah would know what it's called. Yeah, yeah. I know already. My annoyance is clear, and normally I wouldn't talk to them like this. I'm just getting sick of how I'm still thought of as a weak, defenseless kid that can't fend for himself. I'm strong than both of them. If anyone is protecting anyone, it's me protecting them. They wouldn't have been able to get into the Elven Kingdom's borders if I didn't blow a hole through the wall. Don't give your mother attitude, Marcus. She's just worried about you. Yada, yada. Leaving it at that is the best thing I can do. I keep my eyes ahead, and I occupy myself by using my fire. I can't help wondering what Sarah and Haley are doing here in the Elven Kingdom. Most players are spending time near the Kingdom of Avalon due to its importance for tearing up. They've really gone out of their way to come this far. Maybe it's personal? I can only ask when I meet them. We've been gaining ground on them. They've slowed down at some places. It's been a long time since I've searched down here Blesical is keeping up appearances and making sure that no one suspects that anything is going on. She's vouching for my whereabouts and I have free reign to search these ancient halls. 
the upper palace is where most of the people stay. These lower levels haven't been used in millennia. Trying to remember where it exactly is has been difficult. It's been many years since I've been down here, and when I was, I wasn't older than seven. Blazical was even younger, so she wouldn't have any better chance at remembering it than I would. What has brought you to this place, princess? I nearly jump out of my skin at the sound of the voice I hear. I look around, but no one is visible. I keep walking forward, hoping to find out where and who that voice came from, and as I turn the corner. I see a ghost what the fuck? Stay back. I'm not getting my soul sucked out of me. I turn and try to leave, but before I can, I'm already levitating off the ground, and I'm taken towards the ghost. The ghost looks familiar like I've seen him before I can't put my tongue on it I didn't expect one of my descendants to run from the mere sight of me. Am I really that old and unfamiliar to you? Descendant? I'm his descendant? I stop struggling to get free from the grasp, and he lets me down. I take a better look, and I can't recognize who this man is, only that he's familiar. Now that I've calmed down, I can think clearly. I can handle fighting monsters and men, but I draw the line at the undead. They're just not something that I mess with. I'm sorry for freaking out. I don't like ghosts or the undead. The man smiles, and I take a better look at his clothes. He's wearing elven royal armor from long ago. He's part of this family, but I don't know who he is. That's not unexpected, but I can't help feeling hurt that you don't know who I am. I'm King Ezelmer or Isox, and I was the first elven king to restore rights to half-bloods in our kingdom. Ah Hezelmer was killed in a coup by the nobles he was killed, but his wife survived. Chapter 386, Keeping Attention Alessandra is running out of time she said she'd be here by 4 p.m., and she's only got five minutes left. While suspicion about her absence isn't rising, I can't keep distracting people for long. Mom will notice soon, but I don't have to worry about that at the moment. She's busy entertaining guests. All nobles that support her, and it's hard to see her become something like this. Alessandra and I were following in her footsteps, but we've both seen that several things have changed. Princess Blesical, I was hoping to find you here. A familiar voice fills my ears, and I turn to see Gail Desiel. An elven noble the same age as myself. He and I have known each other since we were young, and he's someone I'd consider a friend. Not only were we great friends, but Mom planned for me to be married to Gale to ensure his family's support. When Slayer's Irn was revealed, when the son of Archangel Michael was announced that all changed Mom sees Slayer's Irn as a chance at making the elven royal family's true gods instead of just in name. Gale has had an affection for me, and I for him we've never tried anything more than just friends, but it's not like we can try Gale, it's been so long since the last time I saw you. How have you been? He smiles and straightens out a little. He's much taller than I am, and he's very attractive. Most of the noblemen are jealous of him, but that's for his wealth. The elven nobility is filled with beautiful people, and it's one of the staples that follow our society. One of the things that I don't know if it's good or bad it's nice of you to ask but talking about boring politics isn't something that I'd ever bring to bear on you, princess. He keeps formalities up when in the presence of others. Before I can respond, another woman interrupts us. Grabbing Gail by his suit and pulling him gently. My eyes look at the girl, and I instantly recognize who she is. Uria Orvalo, only daughter to the Orvalo family and one of the most important nobles in the Elven Kingdom. While I don't mind you talking to other beautiful girls, Gail. I get nervous when it's the princess herself. Typical. While her voice is sweet and polite, Uria is one of the most cunning nobles I've ever met. She's known Gail for almost as long as I have, and since I'm no longer available, they're to be married to each other. Combining Desiel and Orvalo blood and joining the noble house in an alliance. She is an old friend, Uria. Uriah smiles and rolls her eyes a little. Pulling Gail away as she whispers into his ear. Making him laugh in the process. They're good together, 
but I'm a little jealous. If there were anyone I'd like to have been married to, it would be Gail Uria is a lucky woman, and she'll be happy with him. Don't look so down, Blazical. You still have a chance with Slayer's Irn. My mother's voice stops me from looking at their retreating forms. Gail slowly dances with me on the ballroom floor to the slow music, and his eyes are looking into mine. His smile is calm, and he's steadily dancing with me. I have to be honest, seeing you talk to Princess Blesical made me jealous, and I'm sorry I pulled you away from her like that. He raises a single eyebrow and moves a little closer. Many consider me shrewd, cunning, sometimes manipulative that doesn't mean I'm a terrible person all it means is I know how to get what I want, and while that sounds bad, there are worse things I could do but choose not to. Hmm now, what am I to do with this information? Some might say I need to rethink things with you. The tease in his voice is obvious. I'm glad that he's a good spot when it comes to my more overzealous reactions. Seeing him with women of incredible beauty just makes me nervous. I'm good about not being jealous, but there are times I feel like I need to step in. Hey I should be getting praised. Most girls would rip you a new one for talking to so many girls. I stand by that statement too. He smiles again and leans in, his lips touch mine, and I sink into the kiss. All my worries are washed away, and my thoughts are free from any of the fears I have. You are an amazing fiancé, Uriah. I'm glad that you're mine, and I'm yours. He talks sweet words as he pulls away. He brings me closer and wraps me in his arms. We sway to the music and enjoy each other's company. Gail isn't someone I worry about being unfaithful, and he's not someone that I imagined myself having the revealment of Slayer's Irn is the reason I have Gail now, and I'm happy that I'm the one that gets him. Our wedding day is approaching did you ever think that you'd love the person you're marrying? My question isn't something many people give thought to. Not in our world of nobility. Most marriages are political and forced. While this is what our marriage is, we benefit from loving each other. We've known each other since we were kids, and it's feelings that weren't hard to find. We're lucky in that we love each other, Uriah not many can say that in the nobility anymore he hugs me a little tighter as he says that. This party has hardly taken my mind off what Evander has revealed to me he's a half-blood, and I've come to question everything I've done to this point Evander is an amazing man, and if he's capable of such things, then maybe the other half-bloods are. My current train of thought is interrupted as the doors to the hall open, and Alessandra walks in. She's far later than anyone of the royal family should be. Usually, I'd go and chew her out for portraying something like that, but not with everything on my mind mom, I'm going to talk to sister. See what she was up to. Blesical stands up from our table and leaves towards her sister. I'm lucky to have such wonderful daughters. Sometimes. I feel like I don't deserve them, and I'm doing everything wrong with them after my son was killed my queen, the evening is getting late. Should I signal the staff to start bringing out the food? Evander's voice interrupts my thoughts and my heart aches. I nod a single time with my head, and he waves his hand. Staff come out and start preparing everything at the motion. Changing my plan the plans of the nobles it's impossible now nothing can stop what I've set in motion I've damned my kingdom, and I know that I now leave nothing for my daughters to rule Evander, I wish there was something I could do no one hears my whisper. Not even Evander himself. It's too quiet to hear. This isn't how a queen acts how a sane person acts how a competent leader makes decisions am I so cowardly to change things what is there that I can do I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Chapter 387, Broken Minds The party was a success, as it always is lying to her isn't what I want to do, but she's gone mad. The Orizox family will have to forgive me for my lies. There isn't anything I can do to bring some reality to what she's planning. Queen Orizox is undergoing to commit a terrible act against her own people. More than 40% of the elven population are half-bloods. My worries and duties are blurring together now, and I hoped that this wouldn't ever happen. There are things that need to be done. To undo what she's set in motion. When I do decide to die, 
one day I want it to be when the elven kingdom is fixed. The only one I have to talk to is the person staring back at me in the mirror. Pure-blooded elves have a form of immortality. They live forever and stop physically aging when they wish, but we can still be killed. As a pure blood, I have these qualities, and it's been my duty ever since the first Orizox was crowned that I'm ordered to kill the elven ruler if they descend too far into madness. A curse plagues our throne. Not a literal one, but a metaphorical one. I've killed every elven ruler since the first day I was given my job as the royal family's butler. Given to me by the first king of the elven kingdom. You know what you must do if she doesn't change, and you must try the cycle over again. Hope that Olisandra is a better fit. In a sense, I'm losing sanity myself. Talking to the reflecting in the mirror. The burden of my responsibilities will never end, forced to live an eternal life. There have been countless times I wished to die, to finally have release from life. I don't even know how old I am anymore look at you, you old man talking to yourself in the mirror maybe it's you that needs to be put down moments of madness are becoming more frequent. Olisandra and Blesical are the last hope I have anymore if I'm to kill their mother, Olisandra will take the throne, and if she doesn't, Blesical will. I fear that their mother's insanity has infected them in some way but that doesn't mean I can fix them. Playing God now? I knew that you'd lost your marbles, but this? Talk about scary. The reflection speaks to me, not in my own words. I throw my fist forward, and the glass shatters and sprays in every direction. I'm losing my own grip on reality there isn't much time until I lose my mind completely too much time has poisoned my mind, and immortality, my soul elves that live for a very long time either lose their minds or have their memories wiped after a certain number of years. In all the thousands of years I've been alive, I haven't wiped my memories once. When a memory wipe occurs, you remember that you had your memory wiped, and you keep your most precious memories. Not me. It's all still there, everything I've experienced and all the terrible things I've done. Do I have a weak will? Or is it a strong one I don't know anymore? We'll be arriving at the gates of Greshina by tomorrow afternoon, and tonight is our final night on the road. We've set up camp nearby, and I'm sitting by the fire, almost alone. Haley is with me, and everyone else is in their tents. Haley hasn't spoken much since I told her the truth she's had a faraway look in her eyes, and bags are forming from lack of sleep. She knows that I won't bug her and that's because the Adamos deal with problems in their own ways. Haley and I are the same in that we dive into our heads, the difference being I usually come out of it stronger. She needs help getting out when she does it. Am I evil, Sarah? My head lifts, and I look at her. Unsurprised by her words. I figured she'd think something like this. Evil can come in many forms and sometimes it's hard to distinguish what's truly evil and what isn't. You can know between good and evil, but evil is smart, and it can disguise itself as good. Which makes it hard to distinguish sometimes do you think you're evil, Haley? You know what's in your heart more than I do. What's in your head? She cringes at my words, and she buries her face in her knees. I never believed Haley became what she became until I saw it for myself in my first life. I didn't believe she was capable of succumbing to that life. That's why I say she'd know more than me now. I didn't know then, and I don't know now. I've saved her from that future, but that doesn't mean that which drove her to that life isn't still in her. My eyes turn from Haley, and I look back into the fire. I never got to speak to the Haley that was in my old life not after what she became there were things that I wish I could have said to her but I never got a chance to maybe now is a good time I hated you not the Haley that you are now, but the one that you became my honesty is twofold, and she curls up a bit harder at my words. Haley needs to hear this, and I need to say it. For my own sake of peace. That didn't mean you weren't my sister I still loved you even though I hated you even after mom died I'm sorry I couldn't save you, Haley you were my sister, and I couldn't save you there is no hope in holding back the tears I've saved for this moment. One I never thought I'd have. She lifts her head at the choking of my own voice, 
and she sees the tears falling from my eyes and running down my face. Her tears are the same as mine, and she stands up and moves over to sit next to me. Wrapping her arms around me. I'm so sorry, Sarah I'm so sorry please, forgive me she chokes and hiccups between her words. Her tears are soaking my shoulder pad, but I don't care. There are few moments that I get to cry in my life, and I'm fine sharing tears with my sister. I was always taught never to show weakness, that showing weakness would get me killed I've never cried in front of someone like this everything I've kept buried has broken me, and I don't think those cracks in my mind will ever heal. My poor little brother living with all this pain I'm sorry that I'm such a terrible sister that I tore our family apart it eats me alive knowing what I did hearing what I caused from Sarah learning the truth Sarah keeps his head low, and his white elven hair hangs over his face. I see tears falling on the dirt below his face. Even now, he's trying to hide his pain all I can do is hug him harder, and try to support him. I'm sorry that I'm a terrible brother, Haley in the end. I damned billions to fix my mistakes there isn't a place in hell or the underworld for a monster like me it hurts to hear him say those things about himself, and I can't find the words to speak. Chapter 388, Blood is Thick Than Water I'm all cried out now, and Sarah seems to be too getting the pain you bury out needs to happen eventually. If you don't, you'll be eaten by it. God the last time I cried this hard was when mom died Sarah speaks out of nowhere and he runs his hand up and down his face. Clearing up the wet marks from his tears and shaking off the look he was hiding from me. Sarah doesn't cry the few times I've seen him cry in my life, it was from serious problems it hurts to see him like this vulnerable yet I'm glad that you did let the pain out I know I needed to take some time to cry I'm grateful that you're comfortable enough around me to do so I don't know everything that Sarah's gone through, but the few things I've heard haunt my mind. He stands up from his spot, and in an instant, his wings appear, and they have that amazing golden glow. They stretch out, and I can't help feeling a little intimidated by them. The light of the campfire shines onto his wings, further magnifying their beauty. His temporary elven looks make him look like something truly divine. I'm curious as to why he's taken them out. His body pops and cracks as he stretches a little and I see him looking at an invisible screen. I know he's looking at something. I just don't know. I see him tap on the air, and he turns to me. Do you want to go for a ride? I've marked this location on the map so I can find my way back. My stomach churns and lets out groans of protest at the mere memory of flying on his back again. Traveling across an ocean from the player continent took its toll on me and I'm not sure I can handle flying anymore. Not really, Sarah the thought of going through all that again makes me a little sick, and I don't want to actually experience it again. He smirks a single time and turns his head away. Walking to an opening in the camp. He flexes his body and slightly squats, and in the next second, he's launched off the ground, and the wind produced blows my hair back. His figure quickly reaches the clouds, and he levels out. Heading in a different direction from where we came and where we're going. Taking a flight must be the way he clears his head I'm not a fan of flying anymore. Once, I was jealous of his ability to fly, but being exposed to winds and pressures made the feeling disappear quick. He can have that ability all he wants. My attention is taken from the approaching footsteps of Sally, and she's looking off in the direction Sarah went. I'm not going to ask what you two talked about but please tell me he's going to be okay her voice is a little shaky. She's probably never witnessed Sarah in such a state, and I figured she was spying on us. He'll be fine, just needed a flight to clear his head something to take his mind off his problems Sally makes her way over to me and sits next to me. Wrapping her arms around me, and I can't stop from responding. Sally knows how to comfort someone. She pulls away and grabs my shoulders, looking me in the eyes. There is a concern in them, and worry is washing over her form. How are you doing, Haley? You don't have to share anything, but I want you to know that I care about you and want you to be okay. She's becoming the older sister I never had, and I've warmed up to Sally. Her affection for the people she cares about makes me wonder how she could have turned out so amazing given her life as an enslaved person. 
she escaped that life before my grandparents were born, but going through something like that changes you right? Maybe it depends on the person Jasmine is similar to Sally, just less nurturing. A harder flap of my wings sends me bursting forward, and I soar into the clouds of the night. Following my need to free myself from my thoughts, I burst through the top layer of the clouds and glide. An ocean of stars fill my gaze as I turn on my back and stare into the night sky. The blue glow of the moon shining down on me at this moment, my worries are taken from me. It's been a long time since I talked about the future that I changed. I locked it away and decided that I wouldn't bring it up. Haley caught on to me, though seeing that I knew too much for someone like me. Even with all of my advantages, it's something that sticks out. It runs in the blood you know when something is off mom and dad would know too. If given enough time around me in this world, they'd see the difference in me. I hid it well, but after being with Haley for all this time, she caught on. I'm proud of you, Haley for seeing what I didn't expect you to find so early I underestimated you talking to the stars above calms me in a sense, and being up here. Free from my problems it feels good. They'll always be there, but getting out of the situation can help. There isn't anything to run from, though so what am I running from? Ah this is frustrating pathetic the reality of my actions is pathetic. My denials and shifts in emotions infuriating must have picked it up from mom it's a little funny when I think about it that way. I turn and look down at the clouds, and I flex my wings and push hard. Diving down and coming out from the bottom of the clouds. The endless forest that I find myself overlooking looks full. Teeming with life that I didn't think would be here. They don't know I'm up here, so no need to run and hide. I look at my map, and I'm getting far away from the campsite. I tilt my body and turn around, blasting forward in speed and covering distance. Closing my eyes as the wind breezes against my body. It makes me wonder what the other players that can fly are doing people should be reaching levels where they can have such an ability depending on their classes. It's a nice distraction well, maybe not nice, but still a distraction. It's been a bit longer than I'd expect Sarah to be gone for, but Haley has been a company I didn't know that I'd enjoy, given how emotional she and Sarah have been. My eyes catch the faint golden glow of something approaching our position. Sarah is on his way back and I stand up and wave at him. I don't want to sit here and do nothing. As he comes in for a landing, he's quiet and far slower than he usually is. He's making sure no one is disturbed by his landing. I approach him as his wings disappear. Did your little trip help some? He nods his head and opens his arms as I come closer. My arms are already open. Haley groans at our public display of affection but we both just chuckle. Chapter 389, The Final Stretch to Gresshina 1 Everyone has finished packing up their stuff, and people are loading into the carriage. Sally and I are already on top of the carriage, waiting for Helda to get it moving. It's a magical carriage. After all, it doesn't need a horse. Last night was one of the most emotional nights of my life, second to the death of my mother. Haley sure brought out the hurt part of me. Not intentionally. It kinda just came out the longer I talked to someone who knew the truth. Who had an idea of the knowledge that I carry. You slept all night after you went to sleep, and you didn't talk once while dreaming do you think that getting some of the stress out helped? I've developed a bad habit of talking in my sleep. Sally has heard some of the things that I try to keep hidden. I don't know how much she knows. She says that I'll talk to her about it when I'm ready. Yeah, it was one of the best nights of sleep I've gotten in a while. Sally is my lover and my girlfriend. Someone I've shared many things I ever thought I would with. Yet, I still have lots of secrets. A relationship built on secrets won't last, and I intend on telling her everything about the wish and the things I've changed after we're done with the royal family and the Orvalo family. Do you think we'll reach Gresshina on time, just like we're hoping? According to Helda, Melimora, and Terox, we're getting close to Gresshina. Ashburn, Leela, and Freskra have told us stories about the capital and the things that go down within its walls. Jasmine has been interested in their stories, 
finding the things they know valuable information. The same that I think. Yet, yeah, we're to arrive there by afternoon, if not a little earlier. It helped that we didn't run into any trouble getting here. It's been relatively smooth, in my opinion. Terox and Helda haven't caused any problems, and we're right on schedule. Once we arrive in Greshina, we'll start making plans and giving tasks to those that can do them. This is a big job, and walking into the throne room and killing everyone will not work. It's about making a change in the Elven Kingdom, and to do that, we need to make the proper preparations. Sally and I will be focusing on the Orvalo family, and I think everyone else will rather handle the royal family. Haley will have to help them, but these are just ideas that I have at the moment. Nothing is set in stone. I'm scared about meeting them punishing them for what they did in an instant, I'm already sitting up and looking down at the relaxed Sally next to me. While it's understandable to be afraid, she needs to know that nothing will happen to her. If push comes to shove, and everything turns to shit, I'll unleash all my power and start slaughtering all the nobles. I doubt it'll escalate to any level close to that. You know how I feel about revenge, Sally I think it's perfectly fine to pursue, and it's in your right to punish them. I stand by her. I stand by the words that I'm saying. Sometimes, the only way to get closure is to hurt and punish those who attacked you and damned you to a cursed life. Controlling that vengeance is key, Sally does an excellent job of keeping it in check. Her constant questioning, if it's right or wrong, is evidence of how serious she is about controlling it. She's come a long way in terms of power, experience, and fulfillment of revenge. She's already gotten revenge on those that tortured her and abused her. Now we're on our to find and face the people that signed the blood letter. Hey, I'm with you every step of the way. Remember that. She looks me in the eyes and smiles. Her blonde hair is spread out on the carriage roof below her. Not wasting a moment, I lean over her, and she gains a look, understanding what I'm trying to do. Her eyes become half-lidded, and she puckers her lips. Waiting for me to descend with my own. Not making her wait any longer, I connect my lips with her, and we share a normal and calm kiss. One that's not overly lustful. One that's peaceful. The scenery is starting to become more familiar. It's been a long time since I was even near Greshina. A labeled terrorist like myself shouldn't risk her life like this, but it's a single circumstance that I'm fulfilling. The chance that the royal family can be dethroned and stopped isn't one I'm passing up. Not when Sarah and Haley are here to help. The two most powerful people I know. Their help will ensure that everything happens and ends the way we want to. However, I'm a little worried about Haley and Sarah's mental conditions. From what I saw last night, things aren't so great in the head for either of them. They both seem to be doing better. Ah. Uh -huh. A feminine voice is heard. One that's erotic and muffled. Everyone in the carriage looks at the ceiling above, already knowing where and who that sound originated from. I can't believe them. Haley grits her teeth as she moves for the door and swings it open. Standing up on the edge and poking her head to see them. This isn't the time or place. You horny idiots. She comes back into the carriage with the door slamming in the process. We all look at Haley, and there is a flustered look, and it's not for the reason you think. She's embarrassed that her brother would even try something like that while we're all in here. Sorry about that, everyone sometimes I wonder what he thinks is right and wrong at certain times if only I were as bold as Sarah was, such a move requires something I don't have. He's definitely an interesting person, and Sally is lucky to have him. She'll need to be careful once people learn she's the lover and girlfriend of Slayer Zirn. Many political parties would seek to remove her and while they'd fail, the threat is still there. Remember when we used to try stuff like that? We all look toward Leela as she speaks to Freskra, who is blushing. I'm so embarrassed. Stupid, stupid, stupid Sarah. If my looks could kill, he'd be dead. All he's doing is smiling and looking at my reaction. I should've stopped when he got a little handsy. But no, instead, 
I allowed him to continue his touching, and he eventually found my panties and decided to have some fun in them. Ugh. I'm so mad. The way he's looking at me ticks me off a bit, but it's not all his fault it's mine too I didn't stop him in fact I welcomed it spreading my legs for him to have better access. Come in, it's not that bad. Do you want me to make a sexy noise to even us out? My hand finds its way up the side of his head, but he doesn't budge. Given how strong he is. Charmer, this one. He brings me into his arms, but I don't find myself resisting. I'm sorry, I got a little carried away, and I should have stopped at the kissing, but this isn't all my fault. You need to take some of the blame, too. You didn't put up an ounce of resistance. He smiles as my eyes dodge from looking at him and not. My embarrassment grows at his words. I give a simple nod, confirming my own guilt. Chapter 390, The Final Stretch to Gress Hina 2 Sally is cute when she's embarrassed, but I shouldn't be teasing her too much. I'm not letting you have any for at least a week. Well this is the first time this has ever happened to me. I don't know what to think or feel. I'm not really bothered by that. I've gone the majority of my life without it, and getting cut off now doesn't bother me. Does that make me weird? Most people hate the idea of being cut off from physical fun, but I'm with Sally because she gives me far more than physical enjoyment and pleasure. She's looking at me, and she's growing frustrated at my relaxed smile. What do you want me to say? I love being with you, and I get my fill of pleasure without sex. The best way I can describe it is I feel fulfilled just being with her. There isn't a need for sex, and I still feel the same exact way. I don't know if that's called true love, but it's something better than what most people have. Her reaction surprises me a little. She relaxes and turns her eyes away from mine. You really feel that way about me. Her questioning voice makes me smile and even laugh a little. She looks at me and grows impatient from the lack of an answer. Yeah, I do. Her face is flushed with redness, and she turns away from me. Hum judging from your reaction, you didn't know that I felt this much for you does that embarrass you? Knowing that I love you that much. Sally curls up in a little ball and turns her head to me. Her cheeks are slightly puffed out, and she's trying hard not to react, but I can read her like a book. I scoot closer to her, and I wrap my arm around her. Bringing her curled up form to my side. Nothing will change the way I feel about you, Sally. I love you because of who you are. I know she's still self-conscious about her past. She'll eventually come to understand that I see past that. Forcing her to see it won't work. It'll end up hurting our relationship. She buries her face into her knees for a few seconds and she lifts her head to look at me. You've shown me shown me that you love me despite everything that I've been through you really love me that much. Her abusive past causes her to doubt anything sincere. It's a defense mechanism, and I take no offense in her asking me this. I understand her, and I comprehend the life she's had, and that's why I don't feel offended to being asked this again. I'm not perfect, Sally. But the way I feel about you is the only perfect thing I have. My words have a greater effect on her than I thought they would. Her eyes flash in some sort of shimmer, and that's from the coming tears. She's quick to let the ducks open and start crying. Her features crumple in cute ways as she tries to resist showing me this. UMM I don't what should how come she tries to speak between her hard weeps, and I do what I think is right and hug her. She buries her face into my neck and starts crying. No longer bothering trying to communicate. Sally is a girl that will always have pain and fear buried away within her, and most men would be scared of that. I'm not, and I'm happy that I get to be here to help her when those moments of pain and fear come out. Cause I know, I'm strong enough to help her. Sally also helps me when I'm at my weakest moments. Those don't come around often but she's been there or tried to be there for me. Sometimes, I'd push her away. Not wanting her to see my fears and pain. There are things that I need to learn to do, cause just as I said. I'm not perfect. 
She hugs me tighter as she lets out harder cries. We're getting closer to our kids, and they're traveling the main road to the capital. We've run into a problem, though. We asked around, and it turns out if you don't have verification and proof of who you are, you're not allowed into Greshina. Knowing Sarah and Haley, they've already found what they needed to get inside. Or who they needed to get inside. We have no idea who or what we need this time. We already went to the hideout that Sarah and Haley were at for a while and asked around, but no one gave up any information. This is infuriating. We're so fucking close. But now we're stuck here. The anger in me boils over, and the rare cussing version of myself spills out. Marcus looks at me with a smile and starts laughing, and Chris is doing the same exact thing. Realizing what I've just done overcomes me and I cover my mouth and sit on the bed. It's been quite a bit of time since I cursed like this. Chris stands from his spot, walks over, and joins me on the bed. We've rented an in-room until we can find out what to do. He kisses the side of my head, wraps his arm around my shoulders, and brings me into a sideways hug. Wow, the last time I heard something like that was when you slapped me for always babying Haley. Talk about bringing back some funny memories times before we were parents slapping him that day was an overreaction. I'm over-emotional, I admit that. My anger got the best of me, and it's because no matter how close we get, something gets in the way of catching up to our kids. First, it was the pursuers that chased us after Marcus melted the border wall. Second, it was covering for the lost ground. Now this time, there isn't anyone to help us get into Greshina, which is where our kids are apparently heading. I'm trying my hardest here, and I can't help feeling like someone is impeding my progress. Someone that we can't see. Sorry, honey I'm just being overly emotional right now I'm also sorry again for slapping you that day I apologized to him already, but I still feel bad for it. Marcus rolls his eyes at how affectionate we're getting and gets up to leave. We have to stop him. From everything that Olisandra told me, she had quite the experience down in the castle's lower levels. Speaking to one of our dead ancestors, to be precise. The old king was able to tell her where the hidden passage was, and now we know how to get out of the palace and city undetected. We just need to finish preparing and wait for the best time. My thoughts are currently about mom despite what she's become, Olisandra and I still love her. It's hard thinking about abandoning her to the path she's chosen. I know that look, and I feel the same way, but we've already made the decision. It's not the lives we want. My sister's voice takes me from my memories and internal debate. She's looking out from the balcony, and I question how she even knew that I was thinking about mom. It's probably because she's doing the same thing, and we're so alike. It's hard, leaving a parent that needs you but you know if you stay, you'll suffer for it suffer far more than a child should from the actions of their parents.